Hi there. Um, let's go through the cash ups uh, in 4 pass scan and 4 pass touch quickly. The cash ups is a function that you would perform at the end of a day um, to close off your day and close off your shift effectively. So in the point of sale or 4 pass scan programs then for that matter, um, you can simply just uh, click this, uh, you know, the F12 button by default again. So if I press F12 on my screen, obviously you've got to make sure that your queue number is zero. In other words, all the transactions have been updated by the domain controller into the back office. And then literally you can just type in the amounts uh, that you have physically in the till. Now at the moment on my screen, as you can see, I've got a float of zero. So I'm going to just change the float um, for now to say that I started off my day with a 500 Rand float. Okay. And now I'm going to declare the amount of money. This is the default. You can choose not to have a declaration. Um, better yet to actually put a, um, a, you know, to allow the cashier to declare the money. So let's just say I'm going to have five of those. And you can just press the tab button. And six there and seven there and eight there. Whatever the case may be. And nine there. Fifty cents. I've got two. Again, one rands. Five. I'm just typing in numbers right now, so please ignore it. You'll see that in my uh, demo version, I've also changed the declaration or the denominations to say that that is actually dollars. Uh, so if you're in other countries, you can obviously change this wording here to cater for dollars or kwacha or uh, metikash or whatever currency you're using in your in your business and in your country. All right, so 10 rands or 10 dollars for that matter. I've got five of, and again, I'm just typing in numbers, uh, seven, eight, and nine. And as you can see, you can literally just type through it. Now, for the credit cards, you can literally type your credit card amounts. In other words, you open, you've opened your drawer now. You've got your copies of your credit card slips in there, and I have a credit card for 120. Um, uh, sorry, if you in there, you can press enter on the cards and it will allow you to type in a second line for the other credit card so i've got another 50 rand one excuse the noises and a 60 rand credit card in there i do not have any checks or a payout so i've done some milk and bread or whatever the case may be and i've got a 25 rand for that and another 1750 for something else and again we're not we're not doing the payouts here we're just declaring the receipts for the payouts that we do have and once you're happy with that, you can, uh, as you can see at the top of the screen, literally just press the F12 button again. And then system then comes up with a nice finalizing screen telling us basically that you've declared 2,676 rand. So let's look at the, the figures here at the left hand side. So the amount of money that I declared in my float or in my cash draw physically is 3,176 minus my float so my takings for the day is 2676 all right uh, the system says no 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 but you've sold 12,800 sorry 12,486 rands worth you've got an outage uh, of 9,800 in other words there's 9,800 rand short where's the money okay now again um, there's lots of ways where you can go and say, but where is the money? Well, you know, the important part is that that, that is what the system has calculated. The easiest way to, to determine how did the system get to that amount is to go and look in the back office program. In the back office, I'm going to say, simply say, go to today, load reports. And if I go to reporting, and of course, this is a manager function. Uh, this is not something the cashier would be able to do or should not be able to do. I'll be able to go and do a post transaction listing and I'm simply going to say show print report and there I'll be able to get my whole all my transactions um, on the system all right and you this you'll see is a 19,000 rand amount there most likely is a cash up in between that makes up for the difference between the 12,000 and the 19,000 okay so there were some sales done uh, there was a cash up done uh, and that cash up ad is not didn't, sorry, we didn't do a day end after that. But what I, the purpose of this exercise here to look at the transactions is actually be able to go through each and every transaction here and say, hang on, there were some sales here. Where is the money? Okay. Uh, in South Africa, we've got a, 
uh, saying that came up a couple of years ago because of the political uh, situation and everybody shouted the slogan where is the money or pay up the money well in this case also pay up the money all right so we need to go and find that now if you're a manager at this point in time you can press escape you can go and change your declaration fix it up and say oh no I actually made a boo-boo there I've actually got 12 or 14 or 22 of those okay and then simply press F12 again and get to amount and as you can see I'm still short um, on the cards again it's the other way around I've declared 230 over here but there was no credit cards um, finalized uh, or oh, sorry no sales were finalized as credit card so there's also an outage now whether it's a positive outage or a negative outage in other words negative meaning the one in red here on the top where the cash is and a positive outage as you can see on the card it's the same problem it, you know whether you're up or down it's not correct and if it's not correct it tells us that there's a problem okay so uh, going back to that now the payouts also declared I've only declared 42 but in fact there was a thousand five hundred rands worth of of payouts done big problem okay um, so in terms of the totals also a major issue um, obviously because the totals here uh, is that so in this case now and that's just not your case your case you will go and find the solution you'll go back you go and balance it it's a lot of money you can't just throw 8,000 rand away and say never mind let's try again tomorrow um, if there's an outage it obviously tells you that there's a problem all right and then if I do decide in my case now to finalize it uh, I'm going to finalize it says by clicking yes do you accept the figures are you sure yes thank you all right and there's my my cash up completed in the I'm um, oh, sorry on this screen now it brings up another screen depending on the person that's logged in it brings up an option for you to say what monies are you leaving behind for, as the float for the next day now typically you won't leave 200 rands in the float uh, so I'll, let me just start here okay and I'm just gonna literally say uh, I'm just making all of these zero and then my float would be 106 rand okay well just to make it easier I'll leave 400 rands in there so it gives me a 506 rand float in other words I'm not interested really in counting the cents and the two cents and the five cents even the five rands for that matter okay and you can then post it now the 50612 would become the new float okay of the next day or for the next cash up for that matter and if you then post it that will then go through to the system okay system will automatically log you out and away you go now we'll do the touchscreen cash ups a little bit later uh, I just want to show you the day end now because typically what you will do is you'll do your cash up and immediately do the day end. in fact now let's do it the other way around uh, the scanning customers can wait a couple of seconds while I'm just doing a, a, a touchscreen uh, cash up I'm just going to go out of my 4 pass scan here and open up my 4 pass touchscreen program for my touchscreen customers alright and log into the system uh, on the touchscreen it's a little bit different you've got to click on option menu and then do a waiter cash up first in other words you've got to cash up the waiters that are working in your business so I'm gonna close that and says no Joe soap cannot uh, finalize now he's got one open table all right let's see uh, okay administrator can post so that's fine and that's just a waiter cash up in other words this is the sales per a waiter or cashier for that matter uh, if you're using a, using it in a takeaway kind of environment I'm posting that thank you very much now that will be gone all right so let's just see quickly which tables I've got I'm clicking on Waitron I've got table 201 I'm going to cash that out quickly and there's no information on there and I'm saying fine I'm done all right so now I can go back do another wait and cash up ah, sorry my queue is still one I've got to give the controller time to update it the controller at the back as you can see is open it will monitor now and it will pick up that transaction and make it the queue year zero all right um, and it's gone to zero now as you can see and now I can go and do that all right and we're going back to wait on cash up doing for Joe soap and I'm posting his cash up 
uh, let's just do that one as well that's all done and clean and now I can go and do a, a main cash up uh, and then the cash up is exactly the same as what I've explained now you can literally just go tab down your your fields here fill in all the amounts in there you'll see the float from the previous cash up that I did comes through there and just for sake of an argument I'm gonna say I've got five of that and five of that one give me an amount so the system says my net cash my income for the day in terms of cash is 993 and on this screen I can either click on declaration uh, and it'll give me a total now again declared 900 rand calculated zero big problem as I said whether it's positive or negative out each same problem and for now I'm gonna just post that okay all right so my cash ups have done been done both on the touch screen and or point of sale for that matter the last step of the process is in the back office I must go and do a day end so I go on day end and I just simply say click on day end run uh, sorry there's still a transaction that's not been updated so it's not picking up that the cash up declaration file has come through let's try one more time and now it's quite happy because that transaction has come through just from a technical point of view um, obviously the system is stored or stores uh, the transaction files as it has happened it will be lying in a folder called 4 pass server backslash data backslash current um, all right so the system is now coming up and said do you want to do a day end and for each day end do you want to do it now I want to do it for yesterday in other words the 15th of October now often it will happen that you might be running a business um, that's not open on Sundays the system will automatically select it for the next available day so you can then just choose the date for which the day end must happen so in other words if the last day end was done on the 14th and it comes up on the 15th you can select and say no I want to do it for the 16th and all you do is click on next uh, we'll print out a nice clear day end report for you and all your figures will be nice and updated and your payouts and everything else will appear on the report these uh, you can print it out now obviously if you want to or alternatively if you don't need it on a day-to-day -day basis you're welcome to leave it for later uh, you can always reprint the day end by going into day and doing a day end report again and then all your day ends for the previous months and etc etc will also appear on the system and you can go and say well go and show me argument sake the day end for the 7th of October uh, remember this is a, a demo database so there's not a lot of information available so on the 7th of October that's what happened okay all right um, that in a nutshell is cash ups and day ends uh, do not please ignore it um, in other words keep on doing it do it on a daily basis it makes your system nice and clean all the stock reports etc etc is all linked to day in numbers so if I want to at any stage go and select a date and let's say I want to look at the 13th Friday the 13th you'll see it will not allow me because there was no day end done on the 13th and that is why so important for you to to do your day ends for every day that you trade so that you can get your reports for in terms of stock in terms of turnover um, even purchases for that matter nice and clean clear at all times at the end of the month you will do a month end over and above your day end at the end of the month the system typically will come up and say this is the last day of the month do you want to do a month end <clears throat> and if you select yes it will automatically go and do the month end run for you if you decide that no I want to run my business from the 20th or the 20th makes it easier for my accountants etc etc you can choose to run the month end as and when you choose just bear in mind again you might want to uh, every time you do a day end or sorry a month end it will age your debtors and your creditors um, and just take that in consideration as well in terms of maybe uh, doing interest calculations on the debtors side or claiming for uh, uh, rebates and stuff on your supplier side okay that's in a nutshell the the, the main functionality of end of day end of month enjoy